Hey, what's going on, Pirates? This is Matt Welsh, Be Love to You, and we are very excited to bring on our special guest, Paul Puey. We're here at Anarcho 2023 in Acapulco, Mexico. We uh, both spoke on stage, and uh, it was the Pirates' idea to bring us together <laughs> to uh, share some updates with Edge Wallet. So uh, welcome on the show, Paul. Hey, Matt. Thanks a whole lot for having me. It's been great over here at Anarcho Great talking with the crowd, meeting a lot of new people, both getting into crypto and already had been in crypto for quite some time. We got some parties going on behind, so hope you guys can hear us just fine. But uh, yeah, let's get get this started. Yeah, we got the kids party back there, and it just started. But it was kind of funny because uh, we had these two mics, and we couldn't figure it out. And and uh, I said, Paul, like, do you think you could figure it out? And he's like, Well, let's just Google it. Let's just ask. Yeah. Let us ask the internet, and lo and behold, there was the answer. And we figured it out. So uh, we're gonna have to make do with what we got for audio, but this is the best we can do, and it's a miracle. Uh, so, so basically, I'm gonna approach this like I'm new to Edge Wallet. I'm new to Pirate Chain. Uh, so we know that Pirate Chain is one of the uh, most anonymous um, yeah, cryptocurrencies, uh, untraceable, uh, sound digital money on the planet, and. Uh, sharing that with people isn't always the easiest thing uh, in terms of what wallets do you use, how do you buy it, etc. And Paul has been extremely helpful and innovative in making it more accessible to the average person with Edge Wallet. So can you tell us a little more about Edge Wallet? When did it start? Like, Yeah, so Edge has quite a long history. Uh, we started off as Airbits which was a Bitcoin only wallet back in the era when really only Bitcoin was interesting. This is back in like 2014, 2015. We launched late 2014, 2015 with a focus on using Bitcoin, being able to send and receive it to and from people with Bluetooth and, and NFC and also to merchants. We had a merchant directory built into Airbits to find places where you can spend your Bitcoin. Fast forward to like 2017, 2018, we realized that the ecosystem really wanted to do more than just spend Bitcoin. Actually, a lot of people didn't want to spend Bitcoin. They just really wanted to buy it and hold it. You know, it's sound money. It was a store of value. But a lot of other assets started to come around that provided more functionality than just what Bitcoin offered, i.e. Ethereum and tokens, um, some faster chains that were trying to compete with, with Bitcoin. So we had pivoted in 2018 and launched Edge at that time. The company rebranded to Edge. So the company name is officially just Edge. Um, and launched a new app built entirely from scratch uh, to support multiple different protocols and tokens, but also have a core focus on exchange functionality. So Edge is effectively a self-custody exchange, allowing you to buy, sell, and trade multiple different assets and currencies, um, gives you access to DeFi financial services, such as being able to earn yield and soon being able to borrow against your crypto. So collateralize your Bitcoin and borrow against it, put some dollars in your bank account. It's a great way to use your Bitcoin without actually selling it. So it's some of the services that have become really popular in the centralized exchanges and centralized companies. But now we're offering that in a self-custody, more decentralized manner where you're not putting your funds at the risk of some arbitrary person deciding to run away with it. So that's a little bit of the long history behind it. We've always been focused on privacy. Um, we try to implement what we call is kind of automatic invisible privacy where you don't jump through hoops in order to get it, you just do what you'd normally do with a non-private app, but you get a higher level of privacy. Um, that means that we might not be as private as some of these other alternatives, but we'd like to think that we're bringing more people into a privacy ecosystem that normally wouldn't have even bothered because it would have been too hard. So that's kind of the history of Edge and what, we're, what, we've, what we've been doing. Yeah, yeah. It's, that kind of reminded me of your talk yesterday with the HTTPS. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, exactly. That, that kind of just made it the privacy became normal. It became normal. You don't need, people don't even know they're using it. Exactly. It's user friendly. It's user friendly to the point where it's so automatic now. What people don't realize is if you go if you go to your browser and try to go to a website that does not support HTTPS, you get a big warning. Oh yeah. Whereas before, yeah, it doesn't even open. That's how automatic it is. You don't realize you're using it all the time. Now, SSL or HTTPS comes with quite a few compromises that a lot of cryptographers were like, oh, I'm not sure if we like this. Um, but that's kind of the world we live in. You're never going to get perfect privacy. You're never going to get perfect security. There's no such thing. 100% doesn't exist in almost anything. The point is that what's the good enough that gives us what we're trying to get um, and delivers it in a way that's very adoptable to the masses. And I think SSL, HTTPS definitely accomplished that. And then we're trying to accomplish that from the viewpoint of cryptocurrency and financial privacy. Outstanding. Yeah. Okay. I, I think good enough is like a great way to... to it doesn't sound great. You know, it's one of those like, it's the kind of thing you don't want to say about your wife, right? She's good enough. No one wants to say that, right? 
no one wants to hear they're good enough. But at the same time, you also don't want to just not use privacy. You don't want to have any security or just not use crypto. Right. So you need to know what, what that good enough is for the masses. Because yeah. we're all different people and many people aren't going to jump through the hoops. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. having the balance uh, of privacy being almost natural to the platform, natural to our, our daily actions. Yeah. This is what you've accomplished, and that's really cool. Now, a question I have for you is, Edge, you say it's decentralized. Is there KYC? I never say anything is decentralized, first of all. Okay. I'll never say anything is decentralized because guaranteed when you want to say something's decentralized, I can find a way it's not. And when you want to say something's centralized, I can find a way it's not. And uh, you know what I mean? What, is, what defines decentralized anyway? So what I'll say is it's self-custody, okay. all right? So meaning you own your keys, you own your funds, Edge cannot send your funds without you doing it yourself. We don't have the ability to send your funds. Um, do you call it decentralized? Honestly, I wouldn't call it decentralized. I call it self-custody. Now, what's nuanced now is, well, how private is Edge, right? So KYC becomes the question. Well, Edge doesn't collect KYC, but it is an app. It does have some servers. It holds encrypted blobs of data. We can't see inside those blobs. We don't have names and addresses or phone numbers attached to those encrypted blobs. So I don't know who here in Anarchopolco is using Edge, even if I knew everybody's name. I have no idea which one's using Edge, unless they literally told me. Unless they say, oh, I'm an Edge user, and you told me your name, now I know that this name is using Edge. Otherwise, I have no idea, Oh, okay. right? So we do not KYC any users because we're just software. We're, purely so we're not a financial services company. However, Edge does connect to financial services companies if you want to buy and sell crypto, okay. especially with a credit card, bank account, because those companies need KYC. So when you KYC inside of Edge, what you're really doing is providing personal information to one of the exchange partners integrated inside of Edge. Okay. That KYC personal info is not associated to your Edge account. It's almost as if what we did is we took the process that many people go through when they want to go and buy and sell crypto and we automated it. So what is the process people go through to buy and sell crypto? You go and create your wallet, you like create your keys, you back up your keys. Then you go and create an account with a centralized exchange, create your login credentials, your KYC, you buy some crypto linker bank account, and then you have to withdraw it. And the process of withdrawing it, that centralized exchange has no idea what wallet you're using. Doesn't know if you're using Edge, if you're using Blockchain Info or Coinomi or whatnot. All you're doing is you're copying an address from your wallet and pasting it into the maybe the website or the mobile app of that exchange, and the exchange is sending money to that address but they have no idea where that address is coming from. They don't know that it's Edge or whatnot. That's what people did before Edge. That's what you had to do. That's what a lot of people still do today. Yeah. What we did at Edge is we shortcutted that whole process. We integrated those exchanges inside of the app directly. So instead of you having to copy and paste the address into one of these exchanges, it automatically sends an address for whatever asset you were trying to buy. Not only that, we also become a little password manager for the credentials for that exchange. So instead of having to save um, your keys inside of Edge, Edge encrypts your keys for your cryptocurrency, but it also creates authentication credentials for that centralized exchange and encrypts those as well, wow. like a password manager. So you don't have to log in twice. There's no like log into Edge. Right. And then now, oh, let me go log into this exchange. The way you would have to do if you use an exchange separately from the wallet. Instead, you're automatically logged in. Your, your bank account would have already automatically been linked from when you last used it. You just go to issue a purchase request and the crypto shows up because the address inside your wallet would have already gotten shared with the exchange. But the exchange only sees the address that gets shared for that purchase. It doesn't go and see the addresses of all of your other cryptocurrency uh, wallets. Just because you bought some Bitcoin doesn't mean it sees your Ethereum address, it sees your Monero address, your Pirate Chain address, you know, your Polkadot address. It doesn't see any of those. It literally sees just one address. It doesn't see your username on Edge because it doesn't need to. Why does it need to know your username on Edge? So that's the key difference. And a lot of people think because we've created a user experience that feels like a centralized exchange, they think, oh my God, my KYC information is linked with my username and the fact that I have an Ethereum wallet and my balance on Pirate Chain. They think it's all integrated together. And I get it because we made it feel like that. We made it feel like a centralized exchange, but under the hood, and we are open source, Okay. So if you're a developer and want to audit that, that's how we operate, you can actually see that. But in the end, it's really two separate products um, that don't tie to each other other than literally the address you send to the exchange. And same thing if you want to sell, right? When you sell, you're sending a transaction to the exchange to send some crypto, and they're sending it to your bank account. And all they see is that one transaction. 
Right, they don't see your entire suite of wallets and assets and whatnot. So, so long winded answer to like, you know, what are we doing as far as like, what's the definition of our app? You know, self custody, you ask the question, are we decentralized? No, because nothing is decentralized. I think many things approach decentralization, but nothing's perfect at it. But we are self custody um, and we try to make that easy. That you have. Incredible. So Edge is free to download on free to download. App Store, Android. Yep. Exactly. Yep. You can now, and for those of you that have uh, de-googled your life, you can download an APK, which is an installable file that can install directly into an Android device. Oh cool, man. Yes. I'm so excited. Uh, a few questions. Sure. And then we'll wrap this up soon. So, what are some of the centralized exchanges that are available, like with Inside of Edge? Cool. So, uh, quite a handful. I probably can't remember all of them. Like the top. Um, so, some of the top ones. Uh, one called Simplex, uh, MoonPay, and Banksa. Those are our three probably the top exchanges okay. and they're fiat on and off ramps. They don't actually, they're not exchanges from the viewpoint of them holding customer funds that can then trade like a Binance, mm. right? They might source li some liquidity from a Binance or a Kraken and whatnot. But what they do is they are almost like payment processors. Like you give credit card information, KYC information to like say MoonPay and they will then process that credit card, take fiat out of that credit card or debit card and then transfer what could be their own Bitcoin or crypto over to your wallet. Okay. All right. They might also source some Bitcoin from a more centralized exchange like a Kraken or a Coinbase yeah. or, or a Binance. So that's what those services do. Um, and yeah, those are the three big ones. Um, MoonPay is a provider that does Apple Pay, Google Pay, ACH um, purchases for in, in the US. Um, uh, Simplex does all very global support for credit and debit cards. Um, banks uh, we utilize for support in the UK for a payment method called Faster Payments, common bank transfer method in the UK. It's a very fast way of, trans of bank transfer um, uh, as well. They also support credit debit cards and Apple Pay, soon Google Pay, and they're big in Australia. So they're they're founded in Australia and they support all these payment methods in Australia that I've never heard of. You know, I think it's Pay ID um, uh, and a few others. Uh, and then we have other partners that support parts of Asia. Uh, Zanpool has support in Singapore. Um, banks as well in the Netherlands, and there's a few that I'm sure I'm missing. Okay. You know, we also have cash support with a partner called Liberty X in the U.S. So in Edge, you can actually make an order to purchase uh, crypto, and then go to find one of these locations around the U.S. And if some of these are like little kiosk merchants or you know cell phone top-up stores, and you get a code that you give to the merchant along with some cash, and then Bitcoin shows up inside of Edge. So there's a few different payment methods for sure. And we're always onboarding more because we realize that this is a key part of the crypto ecosystem. We just got to get people onto it, you know, and for some people, you got to get off it too, being able to sell. Yeah. Most of our competitors don't offer selling. And it's actually one of the biggest things that we focus on is offering a sell experience so people can offer them. Because sometimes, you know, things moon and you're like, hey, I got to pay bills. Mm -hmm. So you got to get out of, the, out of crypto to pay bills because the world isn't yet 100% crypto. We hope it will be. And we just wipe out, heck, wipe out buy sell support and then it's just crypto to crypto. Yeah. We'd be happy with that. Ideal. I'd be I'd be perfectly happy with that. Atomic swap. You know? Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> until then, you know, fiat on and off ramps are pretty key and so we support as yeah. many as we can. Until and I think we have richer support than any of uh, any other company that I'm aware of. I think so. I mean, wow. Uh, and until then is key because uh, a lot of uh, extreme privacy folks, it's common in the pirate chain community. Um, oh yeah. They, they don't want to work with uh, banks, governments, regulators. Exactly. Yeah, but there's there's some growing pains that need to be worked out. I mean, we're not alone in this world. No, we're not. And, yep. and they need just as much help as we do. You know, so it's going to take some co collaboration and teamwork. Exactly, and so Pirate Chain fits in nicely because within the community of people that do care about financial privacy, you know, they can be doing commerce between themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, and I leave it to them in whatever jurisdiction they're in to decide and report what kind of financial business transactions they're making, or if they're just small personal transactions that don't need to be reported, it's up to you. You get to choose you know, entirely yourself. There's no way we can do any kind of reporting. Um, but then to get into and out of the fiat world, in Edge, people can convert R, which is the token of Pirate Chain, okay. into another asset like USDT or USDC or Bitcoin or Ethereum, which then has pretty rich on and off ramp support. It does. Right, so that way you can still get into into fiat, into pesos here in Mexico, or into you know dollars in the U.S., Euro, uh, Australian dollars, and you name it, you know British pound. So while pirate might be an early coin that doesn't have a lot of fiat on and off ramp support, the beauty is within our app you can get into the other coins, convert into and out of the other coins that do have on and off ramp support, and you never have to leave Edge.
Wow. I mean, yeah. this is a, this is a big deal for Pirate Chain, especially. And and when did this take place? I know it's been in motion for. Quite it has time. been. Yeah, I first heard about Pirate Chain. I think it was from Raphael from. Uh, from uh, Crypto Vigilante, I believe in 2021 or early 2022. Um, and, uh, you know, I started sharing what we're doing at Edge. They seem to be really excited about it. Uh, they've been uh, promoting Edge, you know, very avidly, and we're very thankful for that. No question about it. Super thankful for anyone that, that uses and promotes Edge. Um, and then he had brought up Pirate Chain. I'm like, in understanding what it was, you know, I've been a, uh, a fan of, you know, a, uh, a fan of a lot of the, the people at, at Zcash. And the amazing, amazing cryptography work that they do. Like they are some of the most ZK smart people in the world building some of the most complex privacy technology on earth. Um, but admittedly, and you know, I've been public about this in, in their face to, to Zuko and to the other team is that, you know, I have, there's some criticisms. And a lot of that is that uh, Zcash is a, is a mixed private and non-private chain. Right. You know, by default, most people use Zcash in a non-private manner, mm -hmm. right? And it's just as public as Bitcoin. Right. And initially, that was almost a need because the cryptography was so slow that you couldn't really expect people to use only private because it took literally it would take minutes to sign a transaction on a desktop computer. Take like two to three minutes on a powerful desktop computer. But thanks to once again the amazing team over at you know the Zcash or Electric Coin Company, they figured out how to optimize that cryptography, make it faster and faster, more usable. But they still haven't gotten rid of the transparent mode what they call the T addresses. Right. And so most people and mostly exchanges, so Zcash is pretty good exchange support, but those exchanges only transact in transparent addresses. In contrast to Monero and Parchain, which only transact in fully private, doesn't have very rich exchange support, yeah. but probably have better adoption of private transactions. So now the question is, what do you want? Do you want adoption of private transactions or do you want rich exchange support? I'll choose the private transactions and I think the exchange support will come and it could come through decentralized exchanges as well. Right. Um, and that's, that's kind of my mixed, uh, mixed feelings that I have. Like I love the, the team and what they're doing at, at electric coin company and Zcash. I wish they would drive forward that privacy by default, but in the interim, I get to see the benefit of what they're doing in other projects such as pirate chain that's what made me excited about it it kind of removed a lot of that criticism mm -hmm. because everything is private by default yeah all right there's no way you send a transparent transaction there's no such thing as a transparent address um and i think competition's healthy i think you know pirates given a, a good run for the money for uh, those people that like zcash but like it for its privacy not just number go up mm -hmm. right if it's like it's number go up well you know, it, you got to have some utility at the end of the day. Um, and it helps drive privacy for everyone because you light the fire under another project. Now, if they start accelerating, you know, the, the need for privacy by default, we as users all benefit. Absolutely. Yep. Cool. Well, this, this feels like a really solid interview. Uh, do you have any final thoughts or maybe you want to tell us what's in the pipeline for Edge? Um, so final thoughts, definitely give Pirate Chain a try. You know, actually use Edge or don't use Edge. Just give it a try. Um, give that team some feedback on what you like or dislike about the protocol. Maybe there's some nuanced numbers, like what's the tokenomics, what's the total supply. You know, I don't think any of it was pre-mined fair launch, is my understanding, which is all, always awesome to hear. Um, that also makes it difficult. The team being what I recall being more fair launch means that there's a lot of resources to do the development. So probably the thing that I'll also invite people to do is you get Sharp Developer Cares About Privacy, consider contributing to the project. Yeah. Right, and seeing if uh, there's some assistance needed. Um, it definitely is, is a difficult thing to, to work on is privacy protocols. Um, I know going back to answer your original question, like, hey, how long was this in the works? It, it's almost like been a year, maybe a year over since we started looking at integrating Pirate Chain to launching it. Um, because the, the SDK, and I once again give credit to where it's due, the SDK was um, kind of borrowed or forked from the, the Zcash world. Um, but a lot of changes were needed to make it uh, pirate chain compatible. And so that those changes were done over the course of the past year plus. Wow. Um, and a lot of times those changes we've made, it would come to edge. We'd give it a try. We'd run into bugs. We'd issues, try to fix them ourselves. Couldn't fix them. Go over the fence back to pirate chain developers. They'd fix it after a few months, come back to us. We'd work on it after a few months and went back. I can't count how many times I went back and forth. But, you know, it's just that's part of the thing you deal with. Yeah. You know, no criticisms to that workflow. It's just. That's what happens when two teams come together and you just, you know, you're balancing, um, working on multiple initiatives because Pirate Chain wasn't the only one we got to, we have to also build Edge itself. But yeah, it's out now. Um, definitely give it a, give it a try, use it, 
try to encourage accepting it. If you're a merchant, consider accepting it as a uh, as an actual currency because the nice thing is with an edge, if you you know don't want to deal with the volatility, which crypto is volatile, you can convert it into a stable coin or sell it into a, a bank. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, give it a try. Pirate Chain URL of Pirate Chain. I'm going to assume piratechain.com. That's, one, good play. Yeah, That's yeah. one of them. Pirate Chain. Black. Or pirate.black. Yeah. And then for edge, edge.app. Simple as that. Awesome. Cool. All right, Paul. Well, thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having me, man. All right, man. All right. Take care. Arr. Enjoy the rest of Acapulco. <laughs> How you going to do? Arr. Arr. A ship full of pirates had been at sea for years in search for a multi-currency self-custody app focused on privacy, but had lost all hope until one morning they came across a shoreline with the object sticking out of the sand. Inside this box of treasures would be the Edge app. Follow the treasure to Edge, where you can store, send, receive, and swap pirate chain. Because financial privacy today is freedom tomorrow. Ah!